Hello, I'm Mike Tolliver for ICOC Hot News. 18 months ago, Haiti was struck by a terrible earthquake, killing tens of thousands and leaving hundreds of thousands without shelter. Hot News recently visited Port-au-Prince, Haiti, where our brothers and sisters have been living in tents, many for a year and a half. Many of us would be tempted with frustration or bitterness were we in the shoes of our Haitian brothers and sisters. When we arrived, however, we found a community of disciples that was not simply getting by, but was doing it with a joy and heart that can only be found in Jesus Christ. The church in Haiti is going well. Okay. God is doing great things in the church. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of challenges, but on ne peut pas seulement voir les, les, les défis, mais on doit voir aussi tout comment Dieu continue de nous bénir, comment Dieu prend soin de nous. C'est quelque chose qui, uh, qui caractérise l'église uh, de Port-au-Prince, et pas seulement l'église de Port-au-Prince, mais toutes les églises en Haïti, c'est que toutes les églises continuent de baptiser, c'est ce qui nous apporte tellement de joie. Pour cette année seulement, pour les premiers uh, cinq mois, de l'année 2011, on a déjà baptisé plus que 50 personnes. Le plus grand défi que j'ai maintenant, c'est surtout avec euh, la question, nous sommes dans la saison pluvieuse, donc avec les disciples qui, qui sont encore sous les tentes, et les tentes sont un peu épuisées. Donc euh, hier, j'ai dû demander à Jerry, l'administrateur, d'acheter quelques tapis pour pouvoir supporter les tentes. Ah, le choléra oui, fait surface avec plus de force. Donc je suis vraiment concerné pour ça. La bonne nouvelle, euh, on a personne qui, qui, qui soit dans l'église, qui soit affecté. The courage and resolve of the Haitian disciples is amazing. Light shines brightest in the dark. And in these terrible times in Haiti, the church is having visitors out to services and many people have been baptized. Of course, help is poured in from outside the country as well. Let's take a look at a disciple from the Philadelphia church who's responding to Jesus' command to serve the needy and his work at an orphanage in Gantier, Haiti. There are 95 kids there. About a third of them are street kids. About a third of them are probably former um, child slaves. About a third of them are real orphans. So we saw a big need. And since that, in the last year, we've addressed that need. I've started my own foundation called the Orphan Education Foundation. And what that is, is I raise money to hire Haitian teachers teaching Haitian orphans. But the idea is you only have the kids for three to five years, so we're doing an accelerated education program. And then I'm also looking for someone who wants to come down and teach English on site, actually live there like a Peace Corps situation. God, you know, God's been <laughs> throughout it. God got me to Haiti. You know, I do part-time paramedic work and I speak French. God took me to the orphanage. Uh, Mark Ottenweller and I went out to this current orphanage. I just fell in love with the place. Um, you know, God's brought hope. The volunteer corps put it on people's hearts to come and serve. So I really think God has blessed the efforts. Well, what I'm hoping for the orphanage, obviously, is two things. One, really get a great education before they leave the orphanage. And the second thing is, of course, I want the kids to see Christ in our life. I want the kids to see Jesus in our life. And so as the groups come down, you know, the groups of Christians come down, that's going to be the opportunity for these children to see Jesus in our life. God can't drive a parked car. So you've got to get out there and, you know, make yourself available for God to do amazing things through you. We are here in Port-au-Prince right now, but we're on the Youth Corps for Haiti, one of three youth corps that we're going to have this summer. And very excited. We've got a team of about 20 that are here now, and uh, we're about ready to worship with the Port-au-Prince Church. But we're staying at an orphanage out in Gontier, about an hour outside of Port-au-Prince, and we're uh, taking care of the kids out there and having a great time. And so uh, we are enjoying our time here. This is my third time to Port-au-Prince to be with the church here, and this is not just an orphanage, but it's it's actually a kind of a halfway house for children that are displaced or come from difficult family situations. And so a lot of needs, emotional needs, physical needs, spiritual needs. Three main things happen. One is we get to serve people, which we're encouraged about. Second of all, we get to support and build up our brothers and sisters. But then thirdly, uh, we watch God change the lives of those that are on the youth corps. Uh, having been a part of uh, many youth corps over the years, uh, I've never had a youth corps that where people didn't come back transformed spiritually in what they've seen, the lives that they've touched, and the ways that they've seen God move. We're very excited about that.
We can all be proud of the work of Hope Worldwide in Haiti, and we can be especially proud of our courageous brothers and sisters there. They've taught us all the meaning of Philippians 4, verse 12. Whether we're living in plenty or living in want, we can all learn from the contentment, faith, and joy of the Haitian disciples in Port-au-Prince. God bless. We'll see you back at the website. Thank you.